All right. Good morning, PT on Ice Daily Show. Happy Thursday. Happy 4th of July. My name is Alan. I'll be your host today. Coming at you live for Leadership Thursdays. And I am hoping by now that all the problems with Facebook and Instagram have been fully resolved, but we shall see. So live here on Facebook, live here on Instagram. Um, hope you have a, are having a good Independence Day morning so far. Hey, Zach, I see you there on Instagram. Um, so let's talk about Independence Day. So if you are watching this, uh, my data tells me that you are probably an American. Uh, most of you are American. So today is the 4th of July. Today is the day that we celebrate Independence Day way back in 1776. Um, so what is independence? Let's talk about independence from a couple of different angles. I feel like my phone's gonna fall down here. There, nope, crap, there we go, got it. Nope, dang, <laughs> so close. Okay, there we go, got it. So what is independence? I talk about 4th of July, we talk about Independence Day. Um, if you look up the dictionary definition of independence, it's, it's one of those terms where they use the word to define itself. We make fun of this in the fitness athlete division because we see that with uh, the definition of, of fitness as well, that the word is used to, to define the term, which isn't always helpful. So the dictionary definition of, of independence is the state of being independent. Uh, that's not super helpful at all. Um, I think we associate independence and freedom with with not needing to uh, go to work or having a, a economical or financial freedom, not having bills to pay or debt. Um, sometimes we think of freedom and independence as is what we see today on the Fourth of July as barbecues and, and lighting off fireworks and and riding jet skis. And I think in general, as Americans, as working class Americans, we tend to associate freedom and independence with not having to do the things that we don't like to do, which, which can be um, sometimes not a, a, an apt way to define independence. Um, and I think we should kind of just look at freedom as, as n not being under the control uh, or influence of others. And that's, that's kind of a, a more broad definition of the word independence. Um, but if we look at it that way, then we have to step back and question do we have independence? Does anybody really have independence? Are we really truly free from the control or influence of others? Um, and I think talking, uh, we'll talk a little bit about burnout here. We'll talk a little bit about independence in, in the way you practice physical therapy and independence in the way you kind of run your business or run your practice if you are a business owner, business manager. Um, so if we define independence and freedom as, as free from the control of influence of others, then we realize that most of us probably don't really have it, but that's not a bad thing. So, so I don't wanna start off on the wrong foot here and say that that's a bad thing. Um, I think a lot of us have issues with, with losing any bit of freedom or independence because we've, we've never had to give it up before, right? Um, most of us have always had more or less full control over our lives. Maybe when you were a kid, your mom picked out your underwear or your dad told you that you couldn't wear your bathing suit outside in the winter. But, but aside from those infringements on our, on our freedom and independence, most of us have never had to deal with that. And so when it is challenged, we do find uh, that, that it rubs us the wrong way. Um, so, so anytime we're told what to do or, or told we can't do something or told how to do something, um, a lot of us take um, offense to it. That, that somehow our freedom or independence is being inf infringed upon. And I'll, I'll say that, you know, there's that old adage that those who have, have, have fought for freedom and had their freedom taken away understand it the best. I definitely will, uh, will agree with that. Um, I, I think back to my, my time in the Army when, you know, your entire life is, is on rails. You're told when to wake up, what to wear, what to eat, what not to do, how to cut your hair, how to shave your beard. All those little things that we take for granted day-to-day -day life are our freedoms that 
that a lot of folks don't have, and not just in the military, but but in other countries in the world. And so I would challenge you, you, you today to kind of look at all the ways that you, uh, you have independence to do the things that you want to do, um, even if you don't feel like you have a lot of independence um, in your work, in your practice. So, so what you wear, what you say, where you can travel, the people you can talk to, all the things that you're able to do, kind of look at it from the other angle and look at all the stuff you can do um, because you have the freedom to do it. Um, a lot of folks ask me why I, I don't travel more or, or take vacation more. And part of the reason is like, I've seen a lot of the world and, and we have it pretty darn good here. I'm, I'm good to stay here for the rest of my life, right? I, I've seen a lot of the world um, and, and my summary of the, the rest of the world is, is that America has it pretty, pretty damn good. So I'd rather stay here and, and there's a lot to, to do here. So challenge yourself to look at all the things that you're able to do um, because of your freedom and because of your independence on a day like today. Um, we certainly have a long way to go with with women's rights and, and race rights here in America. But, you know, if you travel to some parts of the world, um, the, there are a lot of, of rights that we take for granted here, uh, ways that we can dress and people we can talk to and who we can talk to that are just non-existent in some parts of the world. So, so challenge yourself today, first of all, to just look at all the things that you're able to do be, because of the freedom and independence that we have here that we take for, for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. Switching now to talk about practice, um, independence and practice, I think, is probably the biggest way we as physical therapists feel our independence or lack thereof. Um, we often think of, of working for ourselves um, versus working for others um, is, is kind of a, a challenge to our independence. Um, some of us, depending on where we work and where we practice, are told how to practice. Um, we're told what to believe as, as far as... Um, what different dogmas or theories to, to believe and then what what to do and how to implement that or what not to do and implement with our patients. So that's probably the way that, uh, especially from what we hear from, from you all out there, um, is, is how you feel that your independence is, is challenged in your practice. And so that creates um, the, a good uh, foundation for burnout, right? That cognitive dissonance between what you personally believe and how you want to practice and how you want to treat your patients and then how you're told to, to, to treat and practice um, can, can lead to a lot of cognitive uh, dissonance and, and that can really, really, really set the stage to feel burned out, right? You wanna be using high intensity exercise, you wanna be do, uh, use more judicious loading, you wanna have people do deadlifts, you wanna have people do squats, maybe you wanna do some thrust manipulation and you're told not to do any of that. Um, certainly I've been in clinics where PTs were not allowed to do thrust manipulation and, and load people up heavy for no other reason than, than the, the higher up said no, right? There was no defense given. It was just, you know, don't do that. So we see that uh, on an independent practitioner level, when we rub up against those rules, we feel a challenge to our independence and that can lead to a lot of, of burnout. Um, but I think if you're even able to have the conversation about starting to incorporate that stuff into your practice, starting to change the way you practice and kind of having your own practice within a practice, um, then, then you have more freedom than you think, right? Just being able to have those disagreements and being able to have um, that conversation is, is in itself a little bit of freedom, right? The ability to disagree and, and challenge and bring research to your, the management team or the ownership team and say, hey, this is... I think a better way to practice, the research supports it, I wanna start doing it. Certainly we've seen a lot of you lately, uh, the past couple months, the past year, start to get stuff like squat racks in your clinic. And, and of course the whole Remom um, phenomenon has, has caught on. A lot of you are now using Remoms and interval training uh, with your patients. So we see that you're able to kind of challenge and, and force yourself um, into a, a conversation with, with ownership and leadership and, and have that conversation about changing practice. And that in and itself is kind of representative of, of the independence and freedom that, that we have um, and that sometimes we take for granted. And then also I just, you know, as an independent practitioner, I wanna challenge you that sometimes, um, as, as we talked about when we started, that, that freedom is kind of um, associated with things that we don't wanna do. And, and some of the stuff that we don't wanna do is is the cost itself of, of independence. So um, 
a lot of us complain about the documentation that we have to do and, and the, the hours we have to put in uh, doing billing. But really, when you zoom out and look at it, that's kind of a cost you have to pay to not understand medical billing and coding, right? When you, you don't know how it works. Most of us don't know how it works. Um, we know on our end, we just have to, to write some stuff down in WebPT and put some numbers in and somehow that turns into money. But really needing to spend the time um, after, after work or before work or at lunch to get that billing done is, is the cost of independence of not needing to know all that stuff, right? Somebody has to know that stuff and it um, isn't us. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the work we have to put in um, to be able to not know that stuff and not have to deal with that stuff and push that stuff off onto somebody else. So that in itself was kind of a, a cost of the independence of, of not needing to spend time uh, on billing. And certainly we see that with other aspects of, of practice too, right? Most of us don't um, have to clean the toilets at the clinic. Um, that's probably, uh, I, I'm always surprised every week with, with how much time I spend cleaning now that um, with, with Mitch and myself running our own practice where before that was that was pushed on to somebody else. So oftentimes we, the stuff we don't want to do as a PT that we complain about that we have to do is the cost of, of, of the independence to not have to do other stuff, right? So we see that downstream effect as well. The last thing I want to talk about here, I don't want to spend too long on this holiday morning, um, is, is talking about independence as, as a business leader, as a business owner. Um, and we, we see... Uh, once people get a little bit of power, a little bit of leadership, it tends to uh, go to their head, which I think is human nature at some level. But I would encourage all of you out there who are maybe the, the clinic director or the, a, a leader of, of a team or maybe even the clinic owner to start to practice something called decentralized command. Uh, we've talked about it on here a little bit before. It's a principle um, from our good friend Jocko. Um, and decentralized command is just... Um, Recognizing that that as a leader, as as an owner, we have to give give the gift of independence to people. If if we trust folks to be working on their own without us directly watching them, then we need to practice decentralized command. We need to trust that they're going to do the right thing. That we have vetted them and hired them, and we believe that they're going to do the right thing. And so we actually have to let them do the right thing and not stand over their shoulder. Um, and tell them what to do and, and always be giving them feedback. I can guarantee you absolutely nobody enjoys that. No human being that has ever been alive has enjoyed having somebody else stand over their shoulder and, and watch what they do and constantly critique and give them feedback. Feedback is very, very important, but, but not in that style, right? So we have to be hands off as leaders, as, as owners, as managers, and just and let people kind of do their own thing, practice how they want to practice, have their practice within a practice, and just, just let them go. And if we, if we see stuff that's blatantly wrong or, or unsafe, then, then we can pull them aside and give them that feedback. But don't, don't be that person that is always watching uh, the other PTs in the clinic from across the room and, and making comments on, on what they're doing and, and how it could be better or how it's wrong. I guarantee nobody likes that. If your folks are getting the job done, if they're getting the outcomes you want them to get, then just just be hands off. If that means they're in the corner with, with a remom and a beeper and people are doing deadlifts and kettlebell swings and high intensity stuff and they're getting good outcomes, the patients are, are getting better, the, the satisfaction is high, then just, just let them fly, right? Let them have that independence. Give that gift of independence uh, to your clinicians. Um, there are a lot of different ways to get the job done in physical therapy and just kind of recognize that, that the way you've done it and the way you might like to do it uh, might not be the way that somebody else likes to do it and, and get it done. But nonetheless, if the job is getting done, then, then the job is getting done. Give that gift of independence and practice decentralized command. A really big here on that um, at ICE, maybe maybe to too much of an extreme, but kind of just giving um, the independence to the faculty to to teach the courses they want the way they want to teach them, as long as the quality is high and, and you out there that that take courses are satisfied with the product, then we're not going to micromanage you know how the faculty teach a lot of different teaching styles, some more interactive than others, um, some more creative than others, but nonetheless, the job gets done. So, so we practice decentralized command and we don't kind of micromanage and make everybody do the same thing. So recognize as well that, that when we get a little bit of leadership 
power, um, not to let it go to our heads and, and think that the only way to have success is the way that we've had success and practice that decentralized command and, and give that independence to the folks that we hire on underneath of us. So um, I hope you have a great 4th of July. I hope you do get out there on some jet skis and fireworks and red, white, and blue. Getting ready to uh, head down to the gym. We're going to do a hellacious 40-minute AMRAP of running, kettlebell swings, pull-ups, uh, push-ups, and burpees. Should be an absolute riot. Uh, we always have a bunch of people show up on holidays down at the gym. So that's what's on tap for me. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned, cleaning the bathrooms is also on the schedule today. One of those, those costs of independence, of, of being able to make your own schedule, is, is sometimes you got to do stuff like that. So hope you guys have a great 4th of July, great Independence Day. I know uh, a lot of you are off work, so I get, hope you get to spend time. Hopefully you have a long weekend as well um, with this, this Friday between this holiday. So challenge yourself to look at all the ways that you take your freedom and independence for granted, all the stuff you do in your day-to-day -day life that, that you don't look at as, as having freedom and independence. Challenge yourself that independence and in practice is not always 100% the way we want it, but it's certainly um, um, better than we think, especially if we, we flip the script on it a little bit. And then challenge yourself as a leader to practice decentralized command and, and give independence away to the folks underneath of you. So, so chew on that this, this long holiday weekend. Hope you all have a, a great weekend. We'll see you all on here uh, on Monday with Mondays uh, with the Pop with Mike Eisenhart. Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.